I've said on multiple occasions that it's pretty easy to be a lefty when you have no way of enacting your will. Meaning, I could say the most left-wing shit ever, seeing as you have a Republican House, Republican Senate, and a Republican president. Nothing that I say in this case is going to go through, so I can do whatever I want to do from the standpoint of the left. Now, I say that Democrats pivot to the left when they're up against Republican opposition. I think they did that during the time Bush was in office. Um, I was around during that time. That was within my political awareness. And I see the same trends now. I saw it when Obama was in office and they had Obama. He had the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And you could see, meaning once they took office, how they acted prior to taking office gets moderated down. That you're sold a bill of goods when they're out of power and they'll have no ability to enact what they are going to what they're saying. So you have a lot of these Democrats who will say and campaign on Medicare for all because they have no way of enacting Medicare for all. The question is always, what happens when you get power? What do you do when you actually take office? It's like the guy losing his job and calling up a company to pay for a bill. Hey, I've lost my job, but I really want to pay this bill now. I'm saying that the Democratic Party does something similar. They pivot to the left when they have no way of enacting their will. They can be as lefty as they want when there's no chance of getting that stuff done. But the moment there's opportunity to get done, what do they do? Let's go look at Colorado. David Sirota brought the story up, and I like the story because I think it makes that point pretty clear. Colorado, Democrats, the governorship, the Senate, and the House, they've taken it all. Even in the last Republican debate, the guy brings up, you know, this could be a radical change in Colorado because this governor is radical and we have a House and a Senate that, will, that may go to Democrats. There are 33 bills that Democrats tried to pass that Republicans didn't allow, that the Senate killed it. He's the list of 33 bills that passed the Democratic House since 2016 that died in the Republican-controlled Senate. It include paid paternal leave, paid sick leave, funding for kindergarten, for full-day dinner garden, ending the death penalty, setbacks for oil and gas drilling, permission for law enforcement to remove weapons from people who are in the midst of a mental health crisis. That shouldn't even be controversial. This particular person is off his nut, losing his shit, but you're saying that the police don't have any level of, of jurisdiction to say, okay, let's take the gun off of this guy who's losing his shit and off his tit. That's an amazing thing to be against. That's fucking amazing. That shows more, there are plenty of things that shows how there are delegations of politicians that are form, fully in the pocket of interests that have nothing to do with the interests of the American public. Um, and several bills against uh, uh, aimed at addressing lack of affordable housing. We wanna make sure people aren't living on the street. That's a radical position. Mm -hmm. Now that they are in office, though, and they have power to enact this legislation, now the bills need to be moderated. This is uh, Denver. What is it? Denver. Name of this paper. The Denver Post. I guess it's the Denver Post. I'm sorry. Denver Business Journal. Zing Zinger and other Democrats have said that many of the bills will come back, but they will be negotiated more with business leaders now that they look like they would pass rather than die in a Senate committee. We put those bills forward knowing they were going to die in the Senate committee. That's why we put those bills forward. But now that there is the likelihood that we have the power to pass these bills, the public has put us in office. The public has said, look, you try to pass those bills. And we want you to be able to pass those bills, so we're going to vote for you to put you in power so you can do what you said you were going to do on the campaign trail and through your legislative achievements. Congratulations. You have power to enact your will. Enact our will. Go forward and enact that will. And the moment that you get the potential to enact your will, those Democrats say, we need to moderate this down. We need to talk to the business community more. Some of those bills will come back, but now that we can pass those bills, they need to be moderated. This has to be incremental after all. We just sold you a bill of goods because we needed you to vote for us, to put us back in power so we can moderate these bills. I lo love that line. 
Zinziger and other Democrats have said that many of those bills will come back, but that they will be negotiated more with business leaders now that they look like they can pass rather than die in Senate. That's an amazing statement. You've put forth bills to the public. And in putting forth those bills to the public, why did you put forth those bills? Did you put them knowing that they were going to die? And now that you have the ability to actually pass those bills to enact the will of the public itself, they need to be moderated. We need to talk to some of the wealthy 1% before going through with this. Forget the fact that the public gave you the power to enact the bills that you put forward. That's an amazing thing to say and admit. And Representative Tracy Craft Tharp, an Ardvarta Democrat, who is considered to be the most pro-business um, Democrat at the legislature, said Tuesday, for example, she's already is working a wide group of stakeholders to come up with a paid leave bill that businesses will not consider to be onerous once asked for all solution that stops them from coming up to agreements with employees on a case-by-case basis. What? They put you in that office. They didn't put you in that office to represent the interests of the 1%. They put you in the office to represent them. And in this particular case, your argument is we need to find something that's not onerous to the businesses. No. The public gave you the power to pass legislation that was in their interests, not the interests of the 1%. In their interests. You sold them a bill of goods. You sold them a bill of goods. You're selling out the public. My job will be to find common ground to be able to, uh, to work with both the Republican and Democrats. Cart. Kraft Tharp said. Find that statement amazing. No, that's, that's amazing. Colorado Democrats are selling out Coloradoans. I don't know if that's what they recall, but they're selling out Coloradoans with the pro-business community helping to write the legislation. I find that to be amazing. Now that we have the power to enact this legislation, we need to moderate it a bit. We need to moderate it. That's an amazing thing. God, that's amazing. That's amazing. You're given that power for a reason. They knew that the Republicans had voted down those bills, which is why they gave you the power to enact those bills. And now that you're in power, now that you're in office, now that you have the capability of enacting what you said you were going to enact, we need to moderate that. We need to moderate that. That's amazing. That's entirely amazing. Um, I'm going to end this here. It doesn't look like anybody is here. So if you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. And you can always support through PayPal or Patreon. Thanks all. Selling them out.